Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we'd like to get started with the afternoon session. And I'd um, like to welcome everybody to the uh, afternoon session. I, I caught a little bit of it of the tail end of the uh, session from this morning, and it was a very, very interesting, exciting conversation, and uh, lots of uh, questions and comments from the, from the audience. So we'll look forward to that again this afternoon. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce our presenters for this afternoon, Michael and uh, Johanna. Mike, Michael Jans uh, lives to promote education, literacy, and community. A two-term trustee and most recent, the chair, he is passionate about the importance of public education. He holds a Bachelor of Arts degree with a major in history from the University of Alberta and served as president of the University of Alberta Students' Union. Michael also served on the University of Alberta's Board of Governors and as Vice President of the Edmonton Bicycle Commuters Society. He works as the Marketing Director of the Edmonton Federation of Community Leagues and, s and currently, currently serves as the uh, Edmonton Public Library, on the Edmonton Public Library Board. In November of 2012, he was honored with the Queen Elizabeth uh, II Diamond Jubilee Medal for Community Service as uh, was selected as one of and was selected as one of uh, Edmonton's top 40 under 40. The trustee is an essential component of local democracy and public education is the cornerstone of our democratic system. I'm thrilled to be able to work with my fellow trustees to make, help make decisions today that will better our city tomorrow. That's a quote from, from Michael. Um, Johanna, Johanna Coe, a grade 12 student at Edmonton Christian, School, or Christian High School, was elected by a group of her peers to serve as student trustee on the board for the remainder of the 2014-15 school year uh, in this pilot initiative. Johanna will attend board meetings, special events, and professional learning opportunities. Johanna, who has worked in, in a research lab at the University of Alberta, volunteers for the Canadian Blood Services Youth Committee and has re uh, recently traveled to Africa and Europe, which she says expanded her world view. After completing high school, she was looking forward to pursuing a career that allows her to give a voice to those who are unheard and to continue learning from people she encounters. This is a great opportunity to have a visible student presence available at, at a district-wide level. I want to acknowledge individuals in the system and ensure that all have a voice. I want them to know they are part of a much larger voice across the district. So, ladies and gentlemen, I give you Michael and Johanna. Thank you, everyone. So I know that we're um, competing against lunch lethargy. So uh, if at any time you want to get up and grab a coffee, please do so. I would ask if those of you in the back and uh, basically from the second half of the room, if you could come forward. We have a couple of empty tables up front. We will have some group activity as well, too. So if you can slide forward. Um, so uh, yeah, what we're going to do here today is we have a brief video, a brief presentation. Uh, we, we'll, we will have questions from the floor. Then we have a breakout uh, activity that will be facilitated by our student leaders here with us today. And uh, then, we'll, then we'll go back to uh, a follow-up discussion coming from the group activities. So um, without further ado, here is the video. I'm doing this because I want to contribute to the education system that has empowered me and I believe that it will empower others. What I want to try and do is bring voices to people who are typically not as involved or who are very new to the school system. I really believe in individualism. I want there to be more progressive and modern ways of learning. There needs to be this more one-on-one -on -one time to figure out how the student learns to bring out their full potential. Oh. Oh. Basically, our Board of Trustees' responsibility is to the moral ownership of public education, and that's the community. And so bringing that student voice to the table will certainly help to guide decisions. I'm really passionate about people. 
people are so diverse. They have so many things to offer. So if I could be the voice for those people, to have some input in the people that make the decisions for their educational career, I'd love to do that. I'm very proud of today. I'm very proud of uh, the energy that's come to the table and the excitement and enthusiasm. You guys have a great level of expertise and we want to ensure that uh, we have at least one student voice sitting at the board meeting participating on a regular basis and making decisions because every decision this board makes impacts all of you in some way. This is an incredible commitment. We all have a right and responsibility to leadership in our communities, in our democratic process, and just making uh, Edmonton and Alberta and Canada a better place to live. I really, really just want to bring out the, the main causes that I'm going to be promoting, which is transportation, growth accommodation, and schools as community hubs, because I feel like those are the main three that affect all students. Everyone has such a great platform, they're talking about so many great issues, but I'm confident in what I'm standing by. If I think that a lot of students are looking for change in an area, I'm going to make sure that the Board of Trustees hears that. Well, my focus is more involvement for Aboriginal students, international students, special needs students, and our LGBTQ students in the school board. And also really just recognizing that everyone in Canada has the right to a great education. And I want to ensure that they do feel like they're getting the best education possible and be as much of a part of that as I can. Hi there. I've just worked so hard for the past three weeks. It's paid off and I just hope it went my way. <laughs> These are all excellent people and if I lose, I'm glad that I lose to them. <laughs> now it's my pleasure to welcome and acknowledge the 15 student trustee candidates who ran in the election. We're the first school district in Alberta to have a student who will be sitting with us as a representative on our board. And we're proud of this accomplishment as it speaks to the importance of youth voice and student perspective. Our new student trustee will provide us with valuable feedback that will help us shape our decisions and enhance our efforts that we make every day to bring hope and opportunity to the lives of our kids. You ready? And you have chosen Johanna Cope as your new student trustee. A great big thank you to the board and also to the students and all the candidates who ran, who ran with me. It was a pleasure to meet all of you, um, and I look forward to working with you here in Los Angeles in the future. It doesn't feel real. I was not expecting it at all, So, but awesome. It's been a whirlwind, but the whole time I always felt like there was support both from the trustee members and also from the students. And of course, I have to give thanks to the teachers involved who sacrificed their time and energy organizing this event that wasn't just efficient, but it was also fun for the students. We'll get in. Do you want to have to look the happy end? Yeah, so that's the video. On November 25th, 2014, Edmonton Public Schools made history uh, by announcing its first ever student trustee. This is the first time in Alberta a student trustee has been part of a school board. Um, and so some things that others have done, so in Ontario they have a student trustee that sits on every single district and they've had that for uh, quite a while and also in British Columbia they have uh, for the past few years now a student trustee. And so they, what EPSB did is they looked at the School Act, Board Policies, Administrative Regulations, and the Trustee Handbooks, and uh, consulted with SVI, which is a, s a nationwide student engagement group. So why did we want a student trustee? We wanted to facilitate dialogue between the student body and the board. We wanted to increase uh, student engagement in board policy decisions and, uh, and in our planning. We wanted to also educate students about democratic governance. So um, how did we see it? This is, this is sort of the, uh, the steps we moved forward with on the pilot project. 
So on September 10th, 2013, trustee, uh, uh, our Minister of Health, then trustee Sarah Hoffman, uh, moved that a student representative be piloted for the 2014-2015 school year. We then had the nomination and campaign period, and then the student election day between September and November. And finally, on November 25th, at our board meeting, the student trustee was announced. So the student trustee is one component of uh, this, uh, the opportunities that we have in student leadership. We have a student advisor council. We have this course, this leadership and, and uh, uh, governance course that we're going to talk about a little later, and then the student trustee position. So uh, the criteria we had for the student trustee were they had to be a uh, registered Edmonton public student in regular attendance uh, in grade 11 or 12. They had to have signed support from the school principal and at least one other adult staff member. They had to have uh, parental consent provided and would be identified by their school's student trustee selection committee as the candidate. So some of the roles and responsibilities that I've had to have uh, this past year is that I go to all of the public board meetings. I don't have a vote, um, and I present a student trustee m report every month. Um, and I can suggest a motion through a committee or a mentor, but I can't personally come to the board with my own motion. And, of course, follow the trustee handbook. Um, and the next component was the governance and leadership course. And for that, I'm going to have one of the teachers that helped lead it, Shelly Kofut, come up and kind of talk about more of the logistics side of it. So what was really good about this course um, was that it was a district-wide course which gave students from all over the city an opportunity to come together and learn together about leadership and not just um, fill in booklets, but also be able to have skills and be equipped with skills that um, and the means to implement those skills in terms of leadership. So I'll invite Shelly Kafluk to talk more about that. So we began the student leadership course after we had done the student trustee election. And part of that was to be able to offer, we, we wanted to work through that first process to see how could we offer the students who maybe did, weren't elected as the student trustee to still be a part, play a part in that role. So a lot of the students continued on after the advisory council had met to elect the student trustee. Um, and the students, candidates who maybe weren't successful in, the, in being voted in. Um, so we began with a, a, like around semester turnaround for high school. So it was um, a nine session um, course, uh, like just nine c sessions. Um, and that happened at the end of January to April. We gave, we're giving credit to these students and that was how the course it was funded as well. So um, depending on how much the students were involved in, it could be anywhere up to five credits. And that's out of the CTS modules. So there was that funding. Um, the board also had funded um, a little bit of teacher release time. As well, there was a bit of funding also from Speak Out um, with their jurisdictional education, s jurisdictional student um, engagement teams. So there was, that was kind of how we, f how it was funded. Um, and so the sessions, we actually wanted to give the students the skills. Um, myself and the other teacher who taught it, we are actually leadership teachers in the high school. So we wanted to make sure that we were giving students the skills in order to work together to have involvement in community, be even beyond the district. So Johanna, we would always let her um, speak about what was happening at the board level. She'd be able to, if the, if the trustees wanted input about questions or the, they knew that they were going to be discussing a topic, she could then have students from about 75% to I'd say about 80% of our high schools, those students would be able to have a bit of a voice to Johanna to be able to go back to um, the uh, board trustees with. So there was her piece, there was also the piece from the Speak Out. Um, we had two students from the Minister's Advisory Council, so those two students would able to, you know, gather opinions or um, have the students participate and get feedback from that. Um, and then we, our, our legacy course was really about looking at what are structures of government and how do you work within those structures of government. Um, so we went to, we would go to, we'd have speakers come in 
So Stephen Mandel came in, spoke about the, co the compare and contrast about city governance versus provincial matters. Um, we had Chris Morris come in and he talked about, he was a, an administrator with Edmonton Public Schools, but then he also is working with the U of A's football team. So we looked at what are the, there's governance even in a, in a, in a sports team. So how do you work within that? Um, we also had um, uh, people speak about working with teams and how do you identify um, personalities and what jobs should you give them. So there was the, that component, but then the students were put on boards. So we had them um, work with about six different boards and the idea was four to six students actually work with something in the community. So it wasn't just related to Edmonton Public Schools. We've had students work with um, the City of Edmonton on their infill project. We had students work with a not-for-profit geomir organizing a fundraiser, a fundraising run. So we had students working together on these projects. One thing that I didn't mention in my first session is we actually also planned for them to have supper together. So the fact that they went to school all day, had to make it to a one location, we actually put it in that they would eat supper together. And I think that was where everybody got really excited to come and just share what was going on in their schools. And from hearing from kind of conversations that we had, students really just wanted to know, you know, they know what, they, what they're given. So if they're only working within their schools, you know, when they hear about, hey, this school down the road or across the city or in another neighborhood is having a, ha having a uh, fundraiser or, you know, they're engaging students, it kind of gives them inspiration to do that back at their own schools. So the idea was for them to not only work together as a board and do things um, across the district in, in improved community, but it was also to have them be inspired to, you know, think about how they could improve their own personal school experience. So that was kind of the gist of the legacy class. So I'm around if you want to ask me any more questions about that. So uh, uh, one other structure we have, which I think some of you have as well, is a student advisory council. This was a group of students appointed by our high school. It meets with the board twice per school year to offer student perspective, and it helps the student representative, our student trustee, stay connected to the student population of district high schools. And one important um, factor that I, I mentioned for our student advisory council is uh, it's a very diverse group. We uh, requested from administration that we didn't want to hear just from the, the usual suspects, the student leaders who are pre-approved for uh, Fast Track University, Rutherford Scholarship winners. We wanted to hear from uh, all perspectives. And I recall there was a, a young man I met who uh, he was working two jobs to pay his rent and go to school as well because he, he, he was living independently. There was a, a, a single mother there as well. There uh, were students with many different uh, uh, challenges and life experiences. So for as trustees, it helped give us a broad cross section of the di of the district, not just the sort of the usual suspects that sometimes you get in these leadership circles. And that sort of that representation being reflective was very important for the board. So uh, the candidate selection process, um, we asked the high schools uh, to, we required of them to uh, make sure that students were aware about the opportunity to put your name forward for student trustee. We wanted to make sure that our messaging was consistent. We developed it centrally and sent it out to all the schools so everybody knew what was being asked of the student and what the obligations were. Um, we wanted equity in being able to express interest. The, we wanted the candidates to meet the nomination criteria, but we wanted them to, um, we wanted, again, like I said, many students have the opportunity to bring their, their name forward. And then ultimately at, their, at each school, the selection panel made the final decision. So each high school selected their candidate who then went forward to the general election. Um, the timeline for the election was uh, quite quick. We started in October and we're finished by November 25th. And on election day, we had a full day event at the, at the Center for Education. Uh, the trustees met and, and uh, we chatted with the candidates. We had the student advisor council and the student trustee candidates uh, present and uh, the candidates shared their vision. You saw this in the video, how they, how they sort of campaigned to one another. And uh, ultimately we had the, the vote conducted by Alberta uh, Elections Alberta, they helped us out, uh, sort of give a, an extra air of, of legitimacy and, and, uh, and uh, 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 prestige to the process.
the clicker. Yeah. Or so. Um. Actually, I'm gonna ask uh, Johanna to talk about the benefits, and uh, uh, then then go ahead. Yeah. So some of the benefits that I really found was that it enabled me to see how much great work was being done already by EPSB in the district, um, and be able to kind of share that with my peers. And so the students in the schools that I visited, I was able to tell them about what was the opportunities that are being done in EPSB and. Um, vice versa, bring some of the students' perspective to the board. Um, and it really gave me, a, what I really appreciated about it was that it was a visible um, representative on the board at a very public kind of level where students could say and refer to that as, okay, here I have a visible presence on the board. And so uh, in between being able to kind of communicate with them uh, was a challenge, but this is something that I really got to learn the inner workings of how EPSV worked and convey that to my peers. Um, and actually, one of the reasons, a really good thing that came out of Legacy, the class, was that it equipped the students with the ability uh, to go after their own engagement programs and uh, really gave them the skills needed to go and be agents of change wherever they went. So the fact that the students are here right now is kind of a byproduct of that. And so if I can invite Jacob Dunn um, up, he was a student, uh, he is a student in EPSV, um, and he can kind of talk a little bit more about the process of bringing the students here uh, to sit with you at the tables. So thank you, Joanna, for the chance to talk with you all. So after Speak Out Alberta was canceled, um, we just, it's kind of a funny story actually. We found out on a bus on our way back from Calgary from one of our seminars, and we just kind of started thinking and we looked at the whole situation. We didn't really know a heck of a lot. Alberta education wasn't giving us a lot to go off. And so we just kind of started to try looking for answers and looking for stuff to bring to people because we lost a bunch of work and we lost a great opportunity in that conference. And so plus or minus quite a few things because I know Joanna doesn't want me to talk for 20 minutes. I can give you guys all a lovely story, but we don't have time. Uh, plus or minus a few things. A few weeks later, um, myself, Brendan Chalifer, Allison Caulfield, uh, Claire Edwards, and Joanna Coe kind of got together and started to talk about a, po about a possibility for a provincial student body. Something that would be able to represent students, but also allow students to talk, compare ideas, and to share their thoughts and knowledge um, about engagement. Now, that's kind of why we're here today, is to be able to talk with you guys about this and to get your thoughts on it and to be able to share um, what we've experienced over the last couple weeks with you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so, yeah, that's one last thing. A very special thanks to all the boards who helped fund us um, to bring us down. This wouldn't have been possible without you. Thank you very much. Yeah, so as I mentioned, this is a, a pilot, the student trustee project at Edmonton Public is a pilot project and uh, uh, what, we're, what we're doing is we have a final report coming to the board in June uh, about some of the benefits, challenges, suggested amendments or opportunity. Uh, one of the challenges we identified is that uh, we're very fortunate to have Johanna who's an incredible multitasker and has incredible time management skills. However, this role is, uh, it does take a considerable amount of time for the student trustee out of their busy academic schedule and they do forego other opportunities for, for engagement. So um, we, we're cognizant of that with this role that we want to be mindful that there's 90,000 students and we need to be respectful of their, their time and their priorities. We also recognize that there are some um, uh, structural limits on the students' involvement in board work. For example, Johanna comes to our public board meetings. She receives all of our public documents. We have her participate in robust discussions in public. However, our, our caucus meetings, our in-camera land labor law meetings, those and the human resources functions, those still remain um, private. Uh, we also understand that, as I said, we have 90,000 students. The elections process was, only lim was uh, limited to a small group of students. And for us, we're, one of the questions we're asking is, what is the best way to bring student voice to the board table? Is there a way that we could sustain or scale up this approach? To give you a sense of the resources of the expenditures uh, of this project, there were uh, time dedicated from staff, we had the cost of the election, 
there's uh, uh, transportation costs in, in helping move move the uh, uh, Johanna and, and to different activities throughout the city for the district. There's uh, professional development uh, and uh, one final detail, a scholarship of $2,000 is, is set aside for Johanna. So as a sort of a, an honorarium or recognition of her time that she's forgoing other, other wor potential work opportunities or others to, to uh, serve the board. On the human resources side, we have uh, teacher time for the leadership course. We uh, spent staff time supporting and coordinating the election and the events. Um, we have a trustee mem mentor, which is uh, myself. Uh, and so I, sp I spend time with uh, Johanna before the board meetings, making sure that uh, uh, she has a fulsome understanding of the issues that are, are coming forward for a vote. And uh, then we have su support from our IT, our communications and, and others. And then we have some staff time set aside to allocate the evaluation. Yeah, so next steps. Uh, as I said, we have an evaluation coming forward in June. Um, this is a chance for us to look through the lens of generative governance. Uh, how can we include the student voice better in our decision making, in our vision, in our strategic plan? And we're sort of mulling over this question. How do we build upon the synergy and in, in excitement of this year's work to find a model of youth voice and leadership that is meaningful, engaging, sustainable, and reaches broadly across our system? This is a pilot project. We think it's it's gone very very well, and we're very thankful for uh, Johanna's engagement. As as uh, um, uh, as I, I'm sure you've you've uh, you've seen that this has brought tremendous value to our district. However, we know that this isn't the only path up the mountain, and there's different uh, options and considerations that we're thinking about for for the years forward. Uh, as I as I uh, I mentioned in the earlier session, we don't ever want to be at the place as a board where we sort of have the attitude of, oh, we have a student trustee, check student engagement complete. Like we, we know that it's much greater than this and it's a multifaceted conversation that we have to continue. So um, we're fortunate to also have Trustee Johnner from Edmonton Public Schools here as well. So um, I may ask uh, Trustee Johnner to help us answer any questions, but at this time we wanted to have sort of a brief round of questions, then we'll have a facilitated discussion with the students and then we'll come back for share, to share our learning. So are there any questions about this, uh, this presentation? And if you would be so kind as to go to the middle for the mic uh, so we can make sure everyone hears. And just give your name, your board, and then we'll. Nope, take two. Yep, there we go. Yeah, Eric Cameron, uh, Chair of Parkland School Division. Uh, great job and uh, congratulations. A great idea. Uh, just a couple of questions. That was easy. <laughs> <laughs> just a couple of questions uh, I'd like to ask. Uh, uh, as far as Johanna goes, is uh, are is she bound by the any code of conduct or anything in policy for Edmonton Public School Board? Yes. So I am essentially a fully functioning trustee member. So I do have to follow the trustee handbook. Um, and at the same time, I'm also a full-time student. So uh, navigating those waters was a little bit muddy at first, but it, it is possible. And, and just a secondly, uh, as far as you mentioned PD, does Johanna, Johanna, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, <laughs> uh, do you have access to all the PD that any normal trustee would have? Um, good question, I'm not sure. Uh, I think there was some PD set aside. I know that I know the trustee candidates did some media training, did some other training before uh, before the election or during the election process to sort of get them up to speed. There was some. Uh, um, do, why don't you talk about what you what you experienced? Well, you know, since this is the first year, a lot of it was learning in the process of doing. So there are a lot of things where I was like, oh, I have to read the agenda. Well, how do I read it as not just a public person, but as a trustee member? What kind of questions do you keep in mind? So that was something that I discussed with my mentor and also the fellow trustees. They're very um, open and many of them, th this is quite new to them as well. So being able to share the experiences on how they kind of hit the ground running um, was very helpful to me. So uh, the PD is more in-house. Yes. You say? Okay. We've 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 shifted to uh, doing a lot more in-house PD. Um, if if there was a need for something external, uh, we would. We w so I guess w this is sort of the learning as doing thing. Like I I imagine if w if we had a if we brought in say presenters to give us professional development on 
uh, a particular partnership we had or a facilities issue or something i'm sure we'd make make that opportunity available to johanna as well part of the part of the difficulty though is that um it's it's a time it's a time management issue as well too that she's in class during the days and other pieces do you want to supplement So that was very helpful and instrumental. But yeah, like mentioned before, a lot of it was learning by doing. As this is the first time for both EPSB and for myself, a lot of it was, okay, so what do you need? What kind of skills do you require? And so a lot of it was, hey, I need help on this thing. Okay, can I receive some information or instruction on that? And they were very helpful. Thank you. Just the one final question, and I'll leave. Uh, in the nomination from each high school, were there any high schools that did not have a student nominated? Um, it, sorry, we'll take a couple more questions. Yeah, please, go ahead. Then we'll go to the tables. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, Michelle Matkashi, Sturgeon School Division. Um, just a quick question on, um, so you are a go to the Edmonton Christian School, and there's, again, all this vast amount of students in all these other schools. How are you um, engaging or in communication mm -hmm. with what the needs um, are in the variety of schools in the different areas mm -hmm. of Edmonton, uh, different social economics, that sort of thing. And how are you getting that feedback? And that obviously that's going to take time as well. Yeah, really, really good question. That was actually probably the biggest challenge that I faced this year is how do I, because before there was no network of students like at all. Uh, um, like the student, the schools were doing very amazing things, but a lot of it I found tended to be isolated to the different schools. Um, and so it's just even the idea that you you can have that inter-school student relationship uh, talking about education and talking about the things that are going on in your schools across the city um, in the district was an idea that when I go to many schools that's not really an idea that is even in the minds of the students so that was something that I really faced as a challenge so kind of how I got around that in a sense was a lot of texting a lot of networking with students I made a lot of uh, really good friends that I was able to say oh this agenda item has to pertain to this school in this area. Can I text whoever is there? And I know that their contacts. So um, Edmonton is a very diverse city, um, and it has so many different students from all all different backgrounds and different perspectives. And that's something that I found very uh, refreshing and like so vital uh, to Edmonton as a culture. Um, and so yeah, that's a challenge that I've definitely faced. It's a first year, and so um, something that I'd really like to see is having that network and that support group just to supplement and that's that's a struggle from the board we're thinking about too okay we're dedicating this time and energy into uh, a representative but are we modeling is this representative democracy and how could how can we make sure that our candidates and the high schools and, and others this the individual is is able to have some sort of uh, roots into into structures that support uh, student feedback beyond the student advisory council so um, and yeah, and the legacy course. So another, uh, w this is part of our ongoing conversations, but we, we hope to see a culture of uh, greater student engagement. And we're hoping that we're learning our way there through different pieces. And I'm sure the conversations at your table will bring this forward. Good afternoon. My name is Shirley Caputo. I'm a trustee with the Grand Yellowhead School Division. You've been a trustee for a uh, short time. What has surprised you the most of trusteeship? Um, well, what I really found surprising in the best way possible was how well um, 
the, the fellow, my fellow trustees were so dedicated uh, to really providing the best education for the students, the best transparent and open and respectful education. Oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> no, and how open they were um, in this, they have this fervor uh, for public education that can't be replicated. And so seeing that and seeing the, the passion and the dedication of EPSV to uh, not just student feedback, not just, okay, we're going to give you a token sign or a symbol, but actually looking for ways um, and even creating policies around providing the best for the students um, was amazing to see and hear. And on that note, I will let you free with the students at your table. If you don't have a student at your table, um, please signal and or, oh, do we have one last question? Sorry, that is incorrect. <laughs> yeah, so if I can clear that up for you. What happened was EPSV contacted all the high schools in Edmonton um, and s may let them have a decision on how to bring one student candidate for the student trustee position and two, one or two other supporting students. So that group of students from the high schools, about 50 of them, chosen from the high schools. Uh, there are no like previous requirements. I know that some schools went through an election process um, and some, was, some schools did choose it based on um, if they were in the leadership class just because the school size was so large. Um, but that group of 50 or so students made up the elect body. So what I really appreciated about this process was that it was independently uh, voting by the students for the students, so the students truly got to uh, elect their own representative, if that clears it up for you. In terms of the legacy course, um, high schools were once again contacted and encouraged to bring forward uh, one to three students to participate in the legacy leadership course. Not all of them sent a student, however. Absolutely. Right. And so that's something that um, I, and particularly, I'm very um, adamant about exploring and looking at. And like, Shelley. Mm -hmm. Is there a mechanism for uh, you as the uh, student uh, trustee to review that as well? To get yes. together with other people who are residents of this high school as the good for that school. You guys can have that as your uh, parent council, and your parent council then sends a, a representative to the council to do something like that. And they say,
Right. So, like I said before, that was the biggest challenge and struggle that I faced this year in in like how do I represent fairly and equitably all the students in in the city and so that is something that I struggled with a lot um, and I'm and I am working towards it and I think Mrs. Kafluk is jumping up and down Right, and so the point of this conversation and facilitating this event is also getting those open conversations, and that's also something that I've been working on this year um, so that in future years we can have this network in place. And without further ado, I would like to give you time for having conversations at your tables. Does anybody rate, put up your hand if you do not have a student at your table? So if we could join these two tables, maybe yeah. three tables together, and David, if uh, you want to come and sit here. Yeah, thank you very much. We'll also have some question time at the end. So good afternoon, everyone. Just being mindful of the time. Uh, we'd like to pull together the tables now for a bit of a, a sharing session. From the discussion with the students at your table, did other mechanisms come forward, other opportunities, other discussion points? This morning, there was a bit of a conversation about how through existing excuse me, through existing channels like our school councils where there's a legislated opportunity for students to have a seat at the table at school councils and uh, there's opportunities. Oh, I think, I'm, are you? Oh. All right, so if, if, so I think we have a couple people joining us again. So yeah, um, basically, uh, if you would like to share, please uh, step to the mic if, if there's something that came up at your table that you'd like to share if further qu if you have further questions if something was uh, shared that was most interesting to your table thank you so I just want to say thank you very much for for this pilot project I really um, I, for our board um, student engagement and leadership is our top priority as well and so to see it done in this format and we've done it in a different format um, is so exciting and to see that student voices are being recognized and being listened to instead of we know better, students don't know anything, you guys need to you know, just sit down and shut up. Is I'm just so glad that that's being recognized. And I'm so proud that you guys are doing this and proud of you, Joanna, for stepping up to do this. Thank yeah, thank you. I, d I, uh, I don't think we have the model perfect. I think it, this is a work in progress and we're learning our way there. But I would love five years from now for this conference to have a statistic that said 100% of Alberta schools have a student on their school council. 100% of Alberta schools have some mechanism at their school level. 100% of Alberta school districts have some form of student leadership connection to governance, and I think that would be exciting. Other questions or comments? Going once? Going twice? Then I guess you can continue the table discussions, and we'll invite Rick back up to uh, wrap up, and I, yeah. What's next, Rick? We'll wrap it up if you're, uh, sure, come on. And if you have further questions, we'll, we'll be here, yeah, and circulating, so thanks. No, I just wanted to say, I just wanted to say that I think Michael is one of the best trustees. Where's the $5 bill? <laughs> thanks, Michael and Joanna for a very stimulating presentation and uh, an opportunity to engage with the students directly that uh, isn't something that happens for us uh, every day um, in our districts perhaps but not on on this level so thanks again and, and good luck with the uh, with the pilot and uh, indeed I think I, I well I don't think I know I support your notion or your vision that this become kind of universal so on behalf of the Public School Board Association we have a little token of our, our appreciation 
Johanna, and um, uh, once again, thank you for, for joining us. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> okay, what time is it anyway?